Just another night in Leilani. Look at that beautiful glow. Let's see if you can see me. Oh yeah, I don't even need a flashlight. I don't even need a flashlight, but I do have one to review. I got this Olight Raider to review for y'all. I'll be getting that uh, video up here soon. Yeah, it's oh, a do pretty it like powerful. Your kid at a campfire where you put it under your chin. Oh, I'm gonna blind myself. Watch this. Oh God. <laughs> I got my new sunglasses. Oh, uh, you got a little smudge. Let's see. Smudge right there. Oh. Huh? Huh? There's a smudge the whole time. So I got me some new shades. Oh, yeah. At Walmart. The Devil Mart. Oh, yeah. Walmart and Hilo. New shades. Look at those. Oh, shiny. Shiny. The reason I get $15 shades at Walmart is because I will drop them and I will scratch them within a few hours of having them. So, got me into some new shades, oh yeah! I dig these new sunglasses. Now, uh, Hilo is about 20 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on traffic, from where I live. And this is the only place that has, uh, you know, big store shopping. Oh, we got something. Got something, huh? <laughs> What'd you guys catch? Was it a, is it a team? Huh? A team effort right there. <laughs> you guys got snagged? Yeah. Why do you got it? I was trying to bring it my It's a Polani, is that what you said? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's some good eatings right there. Oh yeah, beautiful fish. I'm gonna have to come and fish here. Looks like uh, pretty good fishing. Hmm. The water is kind of murky. So we can though. put a camera right there. If that woman has given wow. given permission for a camera to be there facing eight. Wow. Okay, so here's the problem with it. It's on the other side of the the line of doom. Right. Okay, so there can be like weeks where they don't allow access. So if the trades are blowing. And then right. the poison's yes. coming this way. You can't. Part. You can't get in there. Right. I saw you. I saw you talking about the battery. Maybe. Maybe. What do you think of that? I mean, it should go a couple months. Seems like it worked to me. The battery that's this big that I paid twenty bucks for goes forty hours. Right. So a big lead acid. I would think. It Certainly weeks, if not a month or more. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Someone did mention to me that um, their battery leads. So uh, we're getting a lot of corrosion from the gas. Well, this would be pretty simple, and so, I can just change out the little 12 to 5. No. So, 
science interpreter. Okay, uh, I'm here with my buddy Phil. I wanted him uh, to introduce himself and do a quick little interview with Phil. You're on. Hi everybody, my name is Philip Ong. I'm a citizen geologist here on a big island in Hawaii and I've been here for the last so, 15 years or so. Um, I first came to work with the U.S. Geological Survey as a volunteer at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory and that would give me a, a basis of education of understanding lava flows and the volcano and its dynamics that I try to share with people today. Um, my role today has been to take all the data USGS actually uh, puts out. Um, a lot of it's very scientific or not as easy to interpret as uh, for, the, for the layman. So what I've generally done is take that data and um, interpret it so people can understand what's going on, how it affects them personally, um, how it affects their property, the residences, or life decisions, those kind of things. So I've been kind of an informer, you know, I give uh, daily updates uh, based on our information released, not only by the USGS, but by a lot of our citizen scientists too, who are uh, on the ground all over this eruption, um, checking things out. And, so, and just uh, uh, referencing, cross-checking uh, uh, with the eyewitness accounts and stuff, the like photos that you get um, from the, the citizens of Puna, so, when did you first want to be a geologist, or when, when was the first time you uh, thought about rocks? You fell, when did you fall in love with rocks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, my story with geology kind of goes back to high school when I was uh, going to like a summer camp. And I wanted to go into archaeology camp actually, but all the archaeology spots were full. And geology was the next best thing, and I was like, oh god, okay, well, we'll look at the rocks. And so then I went, and you know, you know, I remember my, my very first project was a particular one. It was in the mountains, North Carolina. And all we did was take all the different pebbles in the stream and look at different kinds of rocks they were, and look at a geologic map and saw where those rocks might have actually come from. And kind of can map out a whole basin of different kinds of rocks that feed to any particular place on the earth and that kind of opened my eyes to the stories that the rocks can tell even if they're just lying in the bottom of a stream, right? They came from somewhere, they were formed by some process and had a journey, you know, that I got them to where I actually got to encounter them. And Hawaii is probably one of the best spots to, to, yeah, to so, at least the beginning, to study the beginning. Yeah, so as, as you kind of go through it and you learn more about geology, you know, um, like travel around, and, you know, what's, what's good about traveling and knowing geology is that you actually learn that each place is like a new, it's a new story, right? Every mountain range you see is a new story. But most of the time, those are things you have, you have to imagine happening. You have to imagine the mountains forming because you don't see them come up from nothing to, to from mountain size. You don't see the mountains erode down into a pile of sand at the bottom, you know, maybe during one flood in particular, but usually you don't see that. It's, I like to call it a science of the imagination most of the time. You have to imagine these things happening over millions of years, which is a time period none of us can really actually comprehend. We imagine it, and we think we, you know, we do our best to comprehend it, but we don't, we don't really understand what a million years is. So Hawaii is a place where you actually can see geology happening on a human time scale, right? Things happen over days and weeks and months, just like a uh, human life, rather than, well, let's wait a million years and see what happens. So it's a unique combination, you know, of, the, of being able to wa watch these Earth processes, the Earth stories change, but during a human life, which is a very rare thing, you know, I'd say volcanoes and glaciers in particular are the ones you can see that the most, and of course, our niche here today is the volcanoes. <laughs> Hot lava. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this interview up right here. And I just wanted to say, uh, let me see if I can get in there. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna get him to make a stone axe or some kind of stone tool. I've been talking about this and I found a good quarry where I can get some good blue rock and we're gonna make some uh, stone tools. What do you think about that? You wanna do some stone tools with me? Yeah, I'd love to, yeah. You know, if we're, you know, if I'm looking for the best stone tool in a Hawaiian style, what I'm looking for is lava flow that's erupting in a place where it's not bubbling very much, so you want the least amount of gas bubbles in there, right? So the less bubbles, yeah. the stronger the rock. The blue rock, we call it blue, blue rock. rock. It's the most common hard rock we find around here. That's like the, the inside of a sheet of lava. So lava comes out, it kind of forms a sheet, freezes against the air and the ground and the middle part that cools the most slowly. Um, doesn't have the gas, the gas bubbles make it cool less into big pockets and you have a lot of areas that are really solid looking bubbles in them at all. That's the best thing we can find easily here in the surface. 
if it was, was it old times, we were looking for the absolute best, sharpest rock, we'd have to go up to Mauna Kea to where the lava up yeah. underneath the glacier. But we can't take rocks from there. And it's the glacier's uh, not there anymore anyways. Yes, yeah. so. <laughs> and that's a protected area. That's why I was having trouble finding good rocks, <laughs> right? But we're, we're gonna have uh, flint, nip, or no, flint, nap, some, uh, we're gonna do some napping. We're gonna do some stone napping. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Akaika and Philip doing an update for Facebook. Doing the community a great service, keeping us informed. Yeah, so uh, the other thing we're doing with our updates is we're uh, putting them on Facebook and also on YouTube. So you guys can check out my channel on YouTube under my name, Philip Ong. And I'll provide a link in the description box to his channel. Booyah! Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Doing a service to the community. Booyah! Thank you guys. <laughs>